So I would like first to thank Ilya and the other organi organizer that I don't know the name uh, to inviting me. It's very interesting to see the other side of the aging field, not just the scientific part. And uh, I have the great opportunity now to, to share with you what we do as vascular biologists uh, to contribute to this uh, research in the aging field. And um, our goal, as we, it has been said a lot uh, uh, yesterday, is not more to increase the number of years that uh, a man or a woman will live on Earth, but more to uh, de decrease the angle of this curve that correlate our chronological age to the biological age so that we will be able, as you mentioned earlier uh, in your introduction, you will be able to feel productive more and to have a healthier aging uh, for more years. So um, we have uh, heard a lot about the effort that has been put to identify these hallmarks of aging that are pathways that manifest during aging in all cells. And if you manipulate them, you can impact the uh, aging process. And it's, it was wonderful yesterday to see how the, biological, the biotech companies are taking over and are really producing uh, drugs that target each of those uh, hallmarks of aging. And we will hear about uh, cellular senescence, um, um, in a moment, or a my, a mitochondrial replacement uh, to uh, correct the mitochondrial dysfunction. And we have all heard about caloric restriction, CIRT6, et cetera. So in our lab, uh, we have kind of zoomed out from these um, um, uh, pathways that happen at the cellular level to look at the aging process at the organ level. And we all know just by looking at ourselves, we all age, that the um, pathways, these hallmarks of aging, are not impacting, impacting the cells of our organs in the same way and at the same time. For example, we are losing, um, passing the age of 30, we are losing 1% of our lung capacity uh, from the age of 30. But our kidneys are more resistant and we will uh, sense a loss of function just be, be, uh, after age 50. And, and hopefully our brain is the most resistant and we will feel his loss of function past the age of 70. So uh, the question is, if we, uh, so it, 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 it implies that the uh, hallmarks of aging are impacting all these organs in different ways and at different times and targeting these pathways, uh, the hallmarks of aging should be according to these different clocks uh, impacting the different organs. So as I told you, I am a vascular biologist. So, but I think you don't have to be one to appreciate how this huge organ that is shared by all other organs in the body really support the function of the other organs in the body. And not only because these are beautiful tubes that bring the blood and all the blood-borne substances, oxygen, nutrients, take out the waste and, and bring also the hormones to the other cells, but also because the endothelial cells, which are the epithelial cells that are lining the interior of the, cap of the, of the blood vessels, are producing angiogen angiocrine factors that are specific for each organ, an endothelial cell in a pancreas will secrete factors specific for the pancreas, which are different from the factors secreted in the liver or in the skin or in any other tissue. And these endocrine factors have been shown by us and by others that they are essential to maintain the homeostasis of the organ by maintaining the stem cells for um, the stem cells and also by instructing the organ regeneration after injury. When a cell is injured and dies, endothelial cells will secrete factors that will instruct the rest of the tissue to proliferate and to fill the gap. And what is aging if not losing these two 
capabilities, losing the regeneration, regeneration and uh, the homeostasis uh, um, capabilities. So our working hypothesis was that aging of the vasculature should impact the function of all other organs. And if we could find a way to prevent or to delay vascular aging, we might be able to obtain a kind of holistic geroprotection. So we, how are our blood vessels age? Uh, we all have uh, heard about the classical cardiovascular disease, which affect the large blood vessels. And remember that a man or a woman is aged as his arteries. Um, and, and we all know about this um, arteriosclerosis, which is a disease affecting the arteries where the wall of the arteries become stiff, become stiff and they cannot vasodilate or vasoconstrict to um, induce a, 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 an adequate blood flow or atherosclerosis, which block the flow in the arteries or aneurysm, etc. All these classical cardiovascular disease is a disease of tubes, which are not able anymore to, to, to distribute the blood to the other organs, inducing um, ischemic injury in the in end organs. But uh, we also know that this uh, classical cardiovascular disease, we have plenty of ways to, to correct them. For behavioral changes, nutrition, exercise, sleep, all the avoid the smoking and drinking. But we have also a, a lot of battery of drugs that were shown to alleviate or to delay or even suppress the onset of these diseases. And for example, rapamycin, metformin, revestrarol, NAD precursors, all these drugs that impact in a positive way the um, uh, large blood vessels are also anti-aging drugs, right? But what we were interested more in the lab is about the uh, capillaries, not the large blood vessels, but the, the tiny, tiny blood vessels that are the ones that are in contact with our cells in the body. And the most, we don't know much about how these blood vessels, these capillaries are aging, but the most prominent phenotype is their disappearance. When we age in, and we observe tissue sections of my, aged mice or aged women, human, we could see a decrease in the microvascular density. And this shouldn't happen because in each of our cells, we have a mechanism that earned the Nobel Prize to these uh, scientists in 2019 for discovering this pathway. When, the, when any cell in the body will sense a lack of oxygen or nutrients, it will switch on the HIF pathway that will induce the secretion of factors, which will instruct the neighboring uh, blood vessels, capillaries, to grow and to bring back the perfusion to the ischemic tissue. And one of these factors is very interesting, the vis vascular endothelial growth factor, because it is involved in all aspects of the angiogenic process. And also it is involved in all the specific features of endothelial cells in different organs, including the secretion of these specific angiocrine factors. And most importantly, it is indispensable to maintain an adequate capillary density in, the, in our tissues. And for example, if we block VEGF signaling in a, a four months old uh, heart of a mouse, we will see that a decrease in the, cardio, in the microvascular density that will be restored only when we will um, uh, restore the VEGF signaling. So there is no backup to VEGF. So this was a great candidate for us to look at, to see if it has an impact on the aging process affecting the blood vessels. And what we saw that in aging uh, organs, both in humans and mice, we have a decrease in the VEGF signaling pathway that we measured by measuring the phosphorylation of its principal receptor. And it is not because a reduction of VEGF, we can measure VEGF in the circulation or in the organ of the, of the mice. And by the way, we got the same trend 
in the human in the, the analysis done in the blood of human uh, uh, um, uh, of human this is the analysis done by benoit le Allier in the lab of uh, uh, tony viscore and if you could see that the last cohort that behaves exactly that our aged mice is the centenarians it ha it, it seems that centenarians have more vegf in their in their blood so it's not a problem of the ligand. You have as many as much VEGF that you want, but we could detect the accumulation of an inhibitor of VEGF, which is uh, the extracellular domain of one of his receptor, with, which is produced by alternative splicing, and it sequestered VEGF and do not allow signaling of VEGF. So. The question that we asked was, can we maintain, is there a way to maintain VEGF signaling in aging mice? And we could do that by targeting, of course, the inhibitors, but I just presented you one inhibitor. It, it, it seemed that we have, we saw that we have lots of inhibitors of VEGF that are accumulating with time in aging. So we decided to saturate the inhibitors by increasing the level of the ligand, the level of VEGF. Oh, we do that genetically by manipulating our mice, and we could um, obtain a twice the amount of VEGF, which is uh, generally um, produced by normal mice during aging, when they age, and we could elevate the level of VEGF twice the amount of naturally produced. And this dosage is very important because in our system, if we go too high on VEGF, we have deleterious effects such as edema and an impact of the hematopoietic system. But this is also an interesting story, but for another time. And pay attention that we begin the, this treatment at about 10 months of age of the mice. So they are not very aged, they are not ill. So all what I will present to you is about preventing the age associated disease and not reversing them as um, um, Chaim Cohen presented us with the Sitzig story. So when we did that, we could maintain a useful amount of VEGF signaling in the tissues of our mice. And this, the consequence was to maintain the micro, an adequate microvascular density uh, in the liver, in the muscle, and all in other uh, tissue, brown adipose tissue, white adipose tissue, bone marrow, all the tissue that we have looked at in these mice. And what was the consequence, the first consequence of this maintenance of perfusion? Well, it's oxygenation, right? So we measured the oxygenation of the tissues in these, uh, in these mice, and we could see that it is completely um, uh, maintained as the level that we, can, we could see in, in young mice. So we follow a cohort of 100 mice, female and males, treated with VEGF and, and control mice, which are little mates. And we could see that not only we were able to extend the lifespan, that, were not, that was not our goal, but we also compress the morbidity period. This time when the mice become to begin to die because of these age-associated diseases and frailties. So we went after all the phenotypes that we could measure in these mice in our lab or by way of, of collaboration. And because this has been published one year ago, uh, one and a half year ago, I will just summarize the results. We looked at the distribution of the adipose tissue, which is something that we could see on ourselves when we age. Aging is about, is about fat. I'm telling you. So we could see that the abdominal fat that is generally accumulating in aging mice is alleviated in VEGF treated mice. And the country, the, 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 the country which happened in the skin where we lose our subcutaneous uh, fat is, uh, is alleviated also in VEGF in VEGF treated mice. We also looked at the brown adipose tissue, the white adipose tissue, and I will just run because I, I, I'm going out of time. We looked at the metabolism, we looked at the liver uh, um, accumulation of fat and injury of the liver, we look at the muscle, we look at the bone, we were amazed to see how much the volume of the bone is preserved in these VEGF treated mice, and maybe because of good muscles and good bones, we could see, or see, we could see also uh, um, a better kyphosis index that we all see in our grandparents. And uh, I will just take a few minutes to expand a little more about a phenotype that we, oops, 
no, no, oops, sorry, uh, that we have seen in our mice is about the tumor burden. Because when we, we say VEGF in an audience, immediately you connect it to ca cancer, right? Because cancer cells are producing tons of VEGF when they grow to recruit new blood vessels so, so that can proliferate and, and increase their volume. And when we follow the mice by MRI, we could see that if the 24 months old mice have a lot of spontaneous tumors, as you can see here, VEGF mice were protected, were protected. And when we followed the mice at time of sacrifice and we observed how many lesion, tumor lesion they have, even at a very old age, our VGF treated mice were tumor free. And now we are pursuing this uh, aspect of this research, trying to understand why we have less tumor when we have better blood vessel, better uh, capillaries. And one of the direction is to show that we have less inflammation. This inflammation, which is chronically present in aging mice and in aging human, in VEGF, we can see a, um, a decrease in this inflammation. And by the way, it's one of the hallmarks of aging that we correct with VEGF treatment. We also looked at the senescence. Uh, we, we didn't see much of senescent cells in many organs, but in the liver, it was astonishing to see that the endothelial cells are the first cells to become senescent and we could correct them with VEGF treatment which um, implies that VEGF can protect the endothelial cells from entering the senescent process or maybe in uh, impact on the immune system that can remove in a better way these uh, senescent cells and just to cut a uh, story long uh, done by Priya Gupta, a postdoc in the lab who is sitting in the audience, we also found that the immune system of these mice are improved. The thymus is not undergoing the atrophy that is, under, that is happening in all the aging mice and, and, and the human. We have more naive T cells and we are very excited to see that the T cells that are in the in the mice treated with VGF express much less of the PD-1 that we have heard about at the immune checkpoint, which can explain why we have less tumors and why we have also less senescent cells since these cells have been shown to express this PD-1 ligand. So I stop here and sorry for taking a, a little bit of uh, more time just to thank the people in the lab that have participated to this study. Of course, Professor Eli Keshet, that I'm working with for many, many years now, and the postdoc and the PhD student that are looking at different aspects of the, of the aging process. And uh, we are recruiting at the level of a postdoc, so if you are interested, please contact me. And this, I was always wondering if the fact that VGF signaling pathway has uh, entered the conscious of the aging field. So I, I, I asked yesterday night, the chat GPT, what he thinks about VEGF and aging, and that's what uh, goes out of it. So I think that it is in the, in the conscious of people. You. If you have questions. Can you say a bit more about what the next stage is for human trials? Yeah. So for a translational point of view, we just got a, um, a grant with a company, a Merck company, who is now uh, supporting us to uh, develop alternative way, which are not genetic, to uh, increase the VEGF signaling. The first thing that we are going to do, and we, are, we have begun already, is to produce an AAV, uh, adeno-associated virus, which is FDA approved to uh, transiently express VEGF. What we have found also is that you don't need a constant expression of VEGF to get this effect. We have done preliminary results because it, it's, a, it's enough to get higher VEGF for two weeks to build stable uh, uh, new capillaries. So we have a, a really a good hope to, to be able to translate these amazing results. You are right, because it was really amazing to see how these mice are, are, go, are doing better in everything that we looked at um, to the to human, uh, to, to, to human trials, yeah. Thank you very much for, for the presentation. It was wonderful and it's quite inspiring, but uh, I'm a clinician and I have one practical question about the uh, what about the retinal 
vessels and heroidal vessels. Thank yeah. you. So you are right. You have all these uh, uh, diabetic uh, retinopathy, which part of them are due to over uh, secretion of VEGF and over proliferation of blood vessels. We didn't. We looked at the retina of our VEGF uh, producing mice, and we couldn't see any effect. Maybe because the VEGF that we produce is from the liver, and that's what we intend to do also for human uh, translation. And uh, maybe because of the blood-brain barrier, this doesn't impact the blood vessels of the uh, of the retina behind the retina. But this is. This is a point that we looked at. What is important to say that you know that we uh, people are uh, treating patients with AMD, wet AMD with Avastin, right? And it is now shown, because this is used for many years now, that it has an impact of the blood vessels, of the capillary um, capillaries um, 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 perfusing the retina. Look, uh, and it seemed that a prolonged use of avastin destroys the color the, the, the plexus which in, which is something that we are pursuing with an ophthalmologist in adasa to see if prolonged use of avastin can impact the blood vessels the normal blood vessels of the retina uh, hi okay, last question, please. Uh, oh may, may I ask, uh, so I was just wondering, you know you were talking about the antibodies you know th that this real problem is there's antibodies being produced against VEGF, and now you're giving more VEGF. And I'm just wondering, is this a, like a symptom of autoimmunity disease? And, so, and, and would that be actually the way to tackle this? Go ahead. Yeah, so it's not antibodies that are produced, but a soluble form of the receptor of the, of the VEGF, which is produced, but what we call alternative splicing. Generally, you have the RNA that encode for the whole receptors, but with aging, there is a mess in the alternative splicing uh, machinery and the extracellular domain is produced and is secreted in the blood. And this, which is done in normal situation, is ex exacerbated in the aging mice and human also. And this is uh, uh, sequestering the VEGF and inhibits its signaling. So a, a way you write, there is a way to inhibit this inhibitor. The problem is that we saw that in the blood of human and mice, we have other inhibitors. So if we want to, to target the inhibitors, we will have to have a battery of, of uh, antibodies or small molecules that will inhibit each of these inhibitors. And this is less feasible. <laughs>